Believe it or not, some celebrities end up getting banned from live TV. So much so that I have a part three list of them today. That is right, I'm your host for this one, Joss Bedard, and today I'll be on the screen, we are checking out a part three list of celebrities who did something to get themselves banned from live TV. Let's get into it. Kicking off our list number 10 is Vivica A. Fox. Back in 2005, the Kill Bill actress appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote her new Lifetime show. Anyone who watches his talk show knows that he is one to make jokes, but some of them did not go over too well with Vivica. Jimmy used this opportunity to make some jokes about her friend, Star Jones, who is a host on The View, and she just didn't like that very much. <laughs> she was clearly upset and the interview immediately turned cold. Jimmy tried to smooth things over and continue having the interview, but she just stopped having it and got up and left mid-interview. She never returned back to the stage to finish the show, so Jimmy actually continued it without her and told the crowd that she would never be allowed to come back. However, um, I think most people can agree that she probably wouldn't want to come back anyways when you uh, make in front of her friend. Up next, number nine is Snead O'Connor. I probably said that wrong. I get it wrong every time. She rose to fame in the 80s as a popular singer and has always been known for her controversial views about politics and personal beliefs. So it's not all that surprising that something could happen during an interview that would have her not invited back for another one. She is just another person to have been banned from Saturday Night Live after she pulled a stunt that just went too far. The show is meant to make people laugh, right? But uh, she didn't do that. She went on the show and performed, and while she was singing a cover of Bob Marley's War, she took out a picture of Pope John Paul II and started reciting the word evil, and then went on to rip it in half and say, fight the real enemy. Really weird. The entire studio was just shocked and left in complete silence, most likely just feeling super uncomfortable, not knowing how to react to that. After that, she was not invited back and she was banned from appearing on the show ever again. Especially performing, if anything. Moving on to number eight, we have Bobcat Goldthwait. Goldthwait? Goldthwait. The comedian had issues when he appeared on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno back in 1994. Usually when a guest goes on a talk show, they sit on a couch and do an interview. They don't set it on fire. Yeah, Bobcat is not the typical guest that people would normally have on their show, apparently. He went on the show and decided that during the interview, he would pull out a lighter and set his chair on fire. Jay Leno actually put it out with one of the cups of water that he had, but he made the comedian sit back in the chair, which was then burnt and covered in water. Bobcat ended up getting fined over $3,000 for the stunt and was banned from the show for a week. On top of that, he was also forced to record a public service announcement about fire safety. His banishment was only a week long though on the show and he did reappear after that. In spot number seven is Kim Burrell. Ellen DeGeneres seems like a pretty accepting person. You would think it would take a lot to get banned from her show. Well, one thing she will not tolerate is homophobic people or homophobic behavior. She was supposed to have gospel singer Kim Burrell on the show, but then she went on Facebook Live and made some homophobic comments. Reports say she was banned from the show before she even went on. Turns out that she was scheduled to go on Ellen's show and promote the film Hidden Figures with Pharrell, but Ellen confirmed that she did not want Kim on the show. She explained what happened and said, her name is Kim Burrell. She made a statement she was doing a Facebook Live and she said some very not nice things about homosexuals. So I didn't feel that it was good of me to have her on the show to give her a platform after she was saying these things about me. Do you agree with Ellen's decision? Uh, I wanna know, let me know in the comments. If I was a homosexual, I probably would not want a homophobic person on my show or someone who makes homophobic comments. Coming up next, number six is Milton Berle. To say he is important to television is an understatement. His nickname is literally Mr. Television. Many people say that he is actually the reason people take TV comedy so seriously. He even invented the idea of celebrity roast thanks to his founding of the Friars Club. So having him on to host Saturday Night Live made a lot of sense at the time. The only problem was he wanted to take more control over the episode than the creator Lauren Michaels wanted him to have. Turns out he added some old comedy bits to the sketches totally unannounced and without approval. Reports say he didn't take any directions that he was given and took it upon himself to give directions to the lighting crew and the stagehands. He 
He insisted on using inappropriate jokes and dialogues in his scripts and even arranged a standing ovation from family and friends without warning the producers. Lauren Michaels was obviously not thrilled about this and uh, he was banned from the show. We are halfway through at number five. We have Robert Blake. Guess what? Another person banned from Saturday Night Live. It seems like getting banned from the show happens more often than any other talk show on this list. In 2001, Robert's wife, Bonnie Lee Backley, was tragically killed. Some people knew her from the iconic Little Rascals movie. In 2005, Blake was actually accused of being the one who pulled the trigger. He underwent a very lengthy and controversial trial, but was found not guilty in the end. Many people would think that this might be the reason that he was banned from SNL, but it actually was not, but it kind of goes hand in hand. He actually hosted the show before this scandal back in 1982 and showed off a very vicious temper in the process. Reports say he was insulting cast members, crumpled up a script and threw it at one of the writers and had a very nasty attitude towards people involved. He ended up getting banned from the show and a lot of people correlate his angry temper history with the murder trial that happened down the road. I don't know, I ain't trying to point fingers, but like, mm. Rolling into the number four spot is Charles Grodin. The deadpan actor is known for being very talented at his craft, so why was his late night comedy sketch so bad to a point where he was banned from returning? Fans expected nothing less than perfection from him when he went on an episode of Saturday Night Live back in 1977. Everyone thought he was gonna crush it, which he really should have, but things did not go to plan. Charles went on to host the show and wanted to play a character rather than himself. He wanted to play Charles Grodin, SNL host, who was bad bad at hosting SNL. He played up this character and deliberately forgot his lines and ad-libbed his way through all of the sketches and basically just bombed the entire thing. He literally kept pretending that he didn't know the show was live. It was um, a nightmare. Lauren Michaels obviously had enough and he was banned from coming back. Poor Lauren Michaels having to ban all these people. Taking over our third spot is Louise Lasser. She was best known for her 1970s soap opera parody, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. She loved what she was doing at the time and you could tell with how it came out through her craft and her character. But you could also tell how she had a miserable time hosting Saturday Night Live because it very much showed. She was actually the first person, reports say, to ever get banned from this show, the very first. During her opening monologue, she mentioned that Mary Hartman was in the middle of having a nervous breakdown. She then started to emulate her character and started rambling about how scared she was to be on live television and she locked herself in her dressing room. Like she literally locked herself in her dressing room during her opening monologue. <laughs> Other cast members tried to coax her out of the room, but only Chevy Chase was successful. But even after the show continued on, she kept forgetting her lines and the episode ended with her sitting on the floor, like the studio floor, talking about her problems and how she was having a mental breakdown. She was banned from the show, but in 2013, she said that she intentionally made it look like she was having a breakdown because she didn't feel comfortable performing the sketches that they had written for her. Just don't go on the show if you don't want to do the sketches. <laughs> Up next, number two, we have Heather Mills. She is just another star that was banned from the Piers Morgan show, who has actually released a list in the past of everyone that he has banned from his show. So he's not very shy about the topic, to say the least. Heather is the ex-wife of Paul McCartney and was banned from his show after she and Paul got divorced back in 2008. She was given a $50 million settlement for the divorce and since Piers was friends with Paul, he didn't feel right having her on his show. In fact, he actually introduced the couple in the first place, so he took his buddy's side and kind of slapped a lifetime ban against her. He has also said it is the least he could do for his friend to make up for the financial and emotional pain that she caused his friend. And he also referred to her as a gold digger. So they're not on good terms. Winning the number one spot is Oprah Winfrey. Bet you're a little surprised. She is arguably the biggest name in broadcast television. Who wouldn't want to have her on their show? 
talk about ratings. David Letterman, apparently. The two of them had a feud that lasted over 25 years and Oprah actually refused to go on his show again, which ended up with him saying that she's never allowed. Letterman admitted that he played up the tension between them on his show to get laughs out of the audience and says it all started when Oprah allegedly snapped at him on the phone when he called her to invite her back on his show. Oprah says she did the appearance on his show and felt very uneasy due to his rowdy audience and just didn't feel comfortable going on again. So she said, um, no. So he banned her. <laughs> the feud lasted way too long. And once he stopped talking about her, like on his show and making funny shots at her, they were able to make up and they have been on each other's show ever since. So this one has a happy ending. All right, guys, that is our part three list. I'm gonna end this video with some comments from part two. Emma Ransford says, I really enjoy Joss on this YouTube channel. She is a talented presenter. You're so sweet, Emma. Thank you so much. I love being here. This is my first channel ever, two years ago. <sighs> I love it. Tanya Melicon says, I have a question about the channel. How long does it take to make your videos? I love your videos. Thank you. Um, scripting can take up to three hours because you have to research and cite and script. Filming only takes about 15 minutes. Depends how many mistakes you made. And then editing, it just depends on the editor. But yes, we have a whole editing team. Zeem Nasrella says, do people still watch live TV? <laughs> my parents do. <laughs> Philip OYT says, Nick Cage is my uncle. That's pretty sweet, but I'm gonna need proof. You know, drop a picture below, send me a picture in the DM. I wanna know. All right, guys, that is all I got. I was your host, Josh Bedard. Make sure you leave a like on this video. It really helps us out. And also subscribe so you don't miss another one. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.